I'm gonna show you guys how to split a hive without necessarily locating the queen. First thing I'll do is make sure I got right smoke. Smoke the entrance slightly. Lift the lid, crack it, get my puff of smoke right under here. Now take the lid off. Check to make sure the queen's not on the lid. She's not there. Get the bees off the top bars. And I can see this colony is pretty strong, getting ready to possibly think about swarming. So what I'll do now is I'm going to start inspecting and these frames and do a quick glance for the queen in the upper box, okay? She's unlikely to be on this frame because there's nectar on that frame. So I'm not going to waste time on that frame. And she's unlikely to be on this frame. So I quick glance because it's all nectar on this frame. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this here, make it easier for me to grab them later. So this, when I put frames temporarily in a box, I typically do it like this, it's easier to handle. Here's a drone trap frame. And this time of year, it's very common to find the queen in a drone trap frame. So I'll look a little bit longer on the drone trap frame. This is all drone brood right there. Okay, so I'm only going to do a quick glance here to see if the queen is easily found. Because if you find the queen, you do not then have to do the next step, which is the shaking of the bees. So a quick glance, look for the queen. Again, unlikely on that frame because there was no young brood on that frame. So you can pretty much guess which frames the queen is going to be on by what's on that frame. I'm getting near the center of the brood nest, so I look down on the frame still in the box. When you first pull the frame out, you got about four or five seconds where the queen is very easy to spot. And then it gets very difficult after the first four or five seconds because the queen moves. But when you first pull the frame apart, she stands out like a sore thumb. And you often get her on the first glance. So no young brood here, no place for the queen to be laying eggs. So if there's no place for the queen to be laying eggs, she's less likely to be there. If I found a frame that had open cells and eggs in it, that would indicate it's more likely for the queen to be there because that's where she is laying eggs. Okay, what I'm doing here, I'm just cleaning these combs up a little bit, some of the uh, drone brood here, so I don't roll a queen when I put these frames back in. Okay. And it's looking like the queen is probably in the lower box, which is just fine because that's where we, we want her to be anyway when we're all done. And that's nectar there. If this were open cells, that would be likely for the queen to be there, but it's not open cells, it's nectar. There's no guarantee whatsoever that the queen is not in the upper box. So I'm going to remove this box. Take the bees down, make sure the queen's not in this box. Give these guys some smoke. Get them going down. And knock off this rear comb sticking out. So the, the bees want the burr comb there for some reason. How come we don't? Um, just because it makes it hard to handle the frames. The bees like to make that bridge between the wooden frames to walk over it. And actually, I have a friend in Chile, he actually puts in this burr comb, saves it. When he puts the box of foundation on, he puts it back on top to bridge off the lower combs onto the foundation. You think that helps? Um, he does, so he could. So now what I'm gonna do is add all these bees back to this box. Make sure the queen's not on here. I'm also checking for queen cells on the bottom bars of this upper box to make sure that we, uh, this colony is not going to swarm. This is, we're right at swarm season and this colony uh, are just making queen cells and swarm very, very soon. And at this point, I'll use this time right now to clean up these frames, get that burr comb off so you don't roll the queen. So you understand the point here, what I'm doing is just getting all the bees off these combs, double checking to make sure the few remaining bees that there's no queen on. 
And I'm gonna look really carefully on this drone film so the cleans really like to be on those. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead, give these bees a little bit of smoke in down off the top bars. Okay, you guys all go down. Okay, now I'll take a clean excluder. Push these bees out of the way so I don't crush the bees. Come on guys, get out of the way, there you go. I'm just kind of nudging them. Just nudging them, getting them out of the way. Put the clean excluder down. I return this box. Okay, now we're all gonna, at the same time, give them their order. We're gonna say, after me, I'll say once, we're gonna say, bees, walk up and fill the upper box again. Ready? All together. Bees, bees walk, walk up and fill the upper box again. again. Okay, we're gonna come back in about 15 minutes and the bees will have completely covered their frames again. And now what we have is a box with bees and brood and no queen and bees and brood down below with a with the queen we can then remove that upper box and then do whatever we want with those split those into into a, a new single split it into two nukes split it into three nukes add add it, those frames to other bees uh, colonies that are weaker do whatever we want but we without ever seeing the queen we have just separated the queen down into the lower box now we're coming back to this hive 20 minutes after we put the box with no bees above the queen excluder. And as you can see, it doesn't take long for those bees to pass from the bottom box up to the queen excluder and return to the upper box. So remember, there were no bees in this box at all 20 minutes ago. And now you can see the bees have repopulated this box and it usually takes we usually about a half an hour, sometimes it's even faster than that. You can come back then and then remove this box for your, your split. So very quickly the bees will pass through that cleaning litter and repopulate the upper box.